What is up, internet friends? Today I thought I would put together a fun video to show you the fun that you can have with fonts in InDesign. So here's this fun little design I put together using just typography. And um, that includes some funky glyphs with little doodles and frames and all this fun stuff. And I converted it in such a way in InDesign that actually I could actually colorize it and play with it and customize it how I want to. So I'm going to show you how you do this. It's really pretty simple. So first thing we're going to do is start down here with just our blank document. This is just a graphic file that I've imported here and it's going to serve as our background. And the first thing we're going to do is place that little bird. Now that bird is part of a font collection that I purchased today from myfonts.com and the name of it is I think you pronounce it gentle gentil I'm not sure it's g-e-n-t-i-l so I'm gonna use my text tool to draw out a text frame here and then instead of coming up and adding type like we might be used to in something like Photoshop, what I'm going to do instead is reach for my glyphs panel. Now if you've never seen your glyphs panel, if you don't already have it on your screen, you can find it under the type menu. So type glyphs, or I've already got mine open over here, so I'm just going to click on it and it's going to pop up like this, okay? So down at the bottom you choose the font that you want. So I just want gentle doodles. This font family comes in several different flavors so I want the doodles for now and you'll see here that we see all the little pictures of all the different characters in the font so if you're used to doing this in Photoshop with something like dingbats you know you kind of have to just <laughs> run through your whole keyboard to find the the dingbat that you want but that's what's so great about the glyphs panel in InDesign is you can visually see all the characters in a given typeface and then you can apply them right from here. So I can scroll through this um, and you can make the pictures bigger or smaller using these little buttons down at the bottom. This is as big as they go or you can make them tinier and here's the bird that I'm looking for. Also once you use something InDesign keeps track of your recently used glyphs up here too so that's kind of nice. Alright so to insert this into our document all I have to do is double click and it's kind of hard to see because it's really tiny. So I'm going to select that and bump the size up to something like 200, which now, of course, it's too big for the box. There we go. So about like this. Now, this is typography, just like anything else. It's like a dingbat, okay? So um, I can use the type tool to select it. But if I want to do more than simply change the color of it, I... I need to convert it from type, from a little dingbat type, into outlines. So it's in, in a shape made of paths that InDesign can recognize. So to do that, I'm going to use the type tool to highlight it. And then I'm going to come up to type, and I'm going to choose create outlines. And nothing much really changes visually, but now you'll see when I hover my cursor over it, I get this funny little outline of all the points that make up the path, right? So I'm going to click on it, and now I have a smaller box within the text box. So that's kind of goofy, and we want to clean that up. So oddly enough, what we're going to do is cut. We're going to cut that out and delete this text box, and then just paste, paste it right back. I know it seems silly, but that's what we're going to do. So we've got it pasted back. Now... I'm going to make sure it's selected, and then we're going to convert this into, um, we need to release, excuse me, we need to release the, the compound paths that are making up this graphic right now. So to do that, we're going to come up to the object menu, and we're going to come down to the paths menu and choose release compound path. Okay, this makes it more editable for us. And it's going to fill with black and it's going to look silly. And we're going to come to the swatches panel now. I'm going to change the fill to none. And I'm going to change the stroke to black. And the weight of the stroke, I'm going to drop down to like a half point or something. 
Okay, so now that is looking pretty good as we can see. And if I want to do something like fill in his little eye over here, I can select that separately now and come back to the swatches panel and give it a black fill and now that's looking pretty great. So the advantage is that now that we've done all this work on this whole thing, um, we can fill this with a graphic. So I can come over here, I've got Bridge open, I've got some files up here in Bridge, and I'm just going to drag and drop this right into the frame and resize it just like any other graphic that you place in InDesign. I can now move this around and rotate it and position this file however I want. So that's looking pretty good. I might fatten up the stroke a little bit. Maybe we will go with one point. Or just three quarters, good. All right, so now we have our little bird in there and he's looking pretty good. The next thing we'll do is create his little talk bubble. So again, I'm gonna grab my type tool and draw a little box and reach for my glyphs panel. And I wanna switch back to the doodle font and I'm looking for this talk bubble right here. So I'm gonna insert it by just double clicking. Now this one, because it's a little different than the, the bird that was much more complicated shape, this is really simple. So we can edit this without having to convert it away from text, which is kind of nice. So to do that, I'm just going to highlight it and we'll come over to the swatches panel and I'm going to make the fill white and we'll give it a black stroke. And maybe that stroke can be just one. It's probably good, right? So that looks pretty good. So why could we do that? Because this was just a simple black filled object, whereas the bird was a much more complicated shape that was made of all these different compound paths. So we had to do some more work on this one to make it editable. This one's very simple. To add the type right on top of it, I'll go back to the text tool and guess what? Draw another type box. And this time I'm going to use gentle just by itself. No um, doodles or anything. And I'm going to type I. I'll put in some spaces and I'll put type. And what we're going to do here is enlarge this. Now to enlarge the text like this, what I'm doing, rather than rather than highlighting it and messing around in the uh, size box, what I'm doing is actually just dragging the text box. If you command or control shift drag from the corner, you can just resize your type on the fly. So just, I wish they would add the scrubbing functionality in InDesign that we have in Photoshop, but it's not there yet. All right, so what I want to do here, I've got my cursor here in this blank space that I <clears throat> that I left because I want to insert another glyph. So I'm going to go back to the glyphs panel and back to gentle doodles and there's a little heart right here and I'm going to double click it to insert it and highlight it, swatches, and we will fill it with red and maybe we'll make the heart a little bigger and looks like I have some extra space in here. There we go. All right. So that's kind of fun. That's looking pretty good. Let's duplicate this by option dragging or alt dragging down here and we'll type fun with fonts and we'll switch this to gentle bold and another thing we can do is we have some fun alternates that come with this font. So for example, if I highlight this S right here on the end and I go back to my glyphs panel and if I dig around in here, where are you? There you are. There is an S right here 
that is an alternate for this S. So you can see it has a curly little bottom instead of the plain bottom that this S has. So if I want to replace this S, my current S, with a different one, I can just double click it and that's done. So that's kind of fun. All right, so this is looking pretty good. We're, we're almost done, actually. The next thing we're going to do is add the fun decorative um, frame around this. So I'm going to use, again, you guessed it, the type tool. And I'm going to draw a big old box. And make sure you've got the text, excuse me, the font that you want here. This one that I'm going to use is part of the same family, so gentle frames. And look at all these awesome frames that come with it. Like, they're so cool. So you can scroll down there and pick one you like. I've got the recent one I used up here. So I'm just going to double click that and it's really tiny. So I'm going to enlarge it a bit here so we can see it. And I'm going to command shift or control shift drag from the corner to make that bigger. And now we're going to repeat this whole process where we use the type tool to select it because what I want to do is edit this and fill it with different colors. And to make it all different, rather than just one solid color, if I change the color of the font, it would change just the whole, everything that's black would become whatever color I want. But I actually want to add some fill in here and I want different colors. So that's why we have to break it down. So again, with the type tool, I've got it selected. I'm going to come back to type. I'm going to choose Create Outlines. I'm going to get the Selection tool. I'm going to select it. I'm going to cut it, delete the big old text box, and paste it back in. And now it's Outlines. And then I'm going to come up to Object, Paths, Release Compound Path. We'll come to the Swatches panel, fill it with None, and we'll give it a black stroke. All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is Option or Alt Shift drag to make a copy of it. And up here in the control bar in InDesign, there's a button right here that will flip that baby vertically for us. And I'll drag it down about like that. And now I can go ahead and actually colorize this however I want. So I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little better. And I'm going to, oops, select this guy. And this little one, so I'm holding shift to select multiple frames, right? So shift to select those. And I'm going to select the alternates down below. And then I'm going to come over to my swatches panel. And with the fill selected, I'm going to add this gold color. And then I'm going to select these shapes. and fill it with brown. And last but not least, I'm going to select all of that by just marquee selecting and then deselect the background. And I'm going to press Command G to group it. So it's just, whoops, how did I manage to miss, miss some? I got sloppy. There we go. And now it's one, one object, which um, just makes it really easy for editing. We'll do the same to our little bird friend. And there you have it. So that is fun with fonts. Enjoy. And if you are looking for some great sites to purchase some professional typography, uh, check out myfonts.com or veer.com. That's V-E-E-R. Uh, they both have great, great Great work by some great artists. So have fun. Thanks for watching.